Nickelodeon, if you want to know about it, it's a kid-owned environment. It didn't feel like the version of what an adult was telling a kid to watch. It felt like really what kids were into. Nickelodeon was actually born in Columbus, Ohio. It's called Cube, and they had these buttons at home and you could interact. Jerry Laybourne came in. She was the one to sort of ask that question, what would it mean to be a network for kids? Kids can smell from a thousand miles away when they're being sold a bunch of crap. If it was a tiny bit naughty, kids would really appreciate that and feel that it was real and it was really for them. You can't do that on TV. No one really knew if it was going to end up being successful. So she gets on the train to go back to New York going, okay, I'll probably be fired in a week. And then it became what it became. We were the anti-Disney. We were the anti-Saturday morning. We wanted less acting and we wanted more normal kids. How come everybody draws babies as these beautiful ones? When they first come out, heads are kind of weird looking, kind of funny looking. And that's why the Rugrats were drawn like they were. The inmates were very much running the asylum back then. It was way easier to slip stuff in. They trusted us. I mean, the stuff we got away with was insane. There's something about just making a show that is just about laughing, it's about having fun, and it's about just being silly. We couldn't afford cable, so I was literally working on the Nickelodeon show and not being able to watch it. When we all got together, we knew there was something magical. To have that diversity in a, in a show, it gave a lot of hope to a lot of kids coming from different walks of life saying like, well, I can do this too. The energy was such that we thought we were gonna change the world. We could fail and do a crummy show, but we couldn't not take a risk. So there's all those crazy things that happen that, you know, nobody knows about.